Max, why are you so sad? Huh? Just don't like that wind. I know. It's rough. Aren't there some rodents you can chase? Guess he found himself a bigger critter. I got a deer. And I thought I would show you guys how I, I take this raw animal and turn it into a table ready snack through a process that used to be called butchering. Of course, we've had to sanitize that and we now call it processing. I'll show you guys how I do it right here in my shop using relatively simple tools. This is pretty much everything we're gonna use. And honestly, you could do the whole job with just this one knife if you had to, or just a sharp object for that matter. I mean, for thousands of years, humans butchered animals with nothing but a sharp rock, so there's no reason to overthink it. I've got kind of a crude table set up here out of a piece of OSB sheeting set up on some sawhorses. This is freezer paper and plastic wrap. That's how we're gonna wrap our meat. I tape it with regular old masking tape. There's a Sharpie marker to write down the, the date in the description. This is a cheap poly cutting board. I've got some knives here. These two are old school, regular carbon steel blades. This is my grandfather's skinning knife. Doesn't have any markings on it, but this is the sharpest knife that I own. I mean, the edge is so thin. This is, this is dangerously sharp. And this is an old hickory boning knife. Now this is old as the hills, but they still make one just exactly like this. And then these are just cheap kitchen knives. Honestly, you don't need to go out and buy knives to do, you know, one or two deer. I guarantee you have something in your kitchen that will get the job done. This is a hatchet. It kind of takes the place of a cleaver. We probably won't even use that. And then this is a meat saw, which is nice to have. If you don't have one, a regular hacksaw works pretty well. Uh, I hope it goes without saying that your knives need to be sharp. Uh, I went through and sharpened all mine. There's a bunch of gear for that. That's a whole other video in and of itself. This is a plastic tub just to hold chunks of meat. And then I do have an electric meat grinder, which is really nice to have. Uh, this one is super slow, but it's way, way faster than the old hand crank one that we used for, for years and years. Good butchering starts with good field dressing. This cavity is completely clean. I split the pelvic bone on either side of the ridge as part of the process. There's nothing in here that could spoil the meat. I've also removed the tenderloins from inside the cavity and I've cut off the scent glands inside the legs. This is a spreader that I made. Real simple. This deer has been hanging for I don't know, three days now. And it's frigidly cold outside, so she's pretty stiff. I've had her inside the shop here overnight trying to thaw out, but it's gonna be pretty tough. The sooner you can skin them, the better. But it's not always practical. Pretty chunky. Been eating that Illinois corn. Told you it was sharp. Man, this thing is wicked.
we have ourselves a side of venison. You don't have to split it down the middle. That's just kind of an old school thing that I do. It helps me move the stuff around by myself a little bit easier. Yeah, there is some hair on this. It's inevitable. We just do the best we can. I did wash this off before I brought it over here. Deer meat's so sticky, it's really hard to get the hair off. Some people like to singe it with a propane torch. We're gonna have a little bit of meat loss just because of the the bullet damage. Nothing we can really do about that. There's really no no hard and fast rules on how to do this. I guess the beauty of doing it yourself is that you can cut the meat the way you want it and make it match your style of cooking. I've run into multiple guys now who tell me they just cut the back straps out and then debone the meat and grind every ounce of it into burger. And if you got some gnarly old buck or some bony old doe, you know, a lot of times that's all you can really do. There's nothing wrong with that. I think what we're gonna do is, I don't know what we're gonna salvage out of this brisket here. We'll salvage what we can. We'll probably just grind that. And then same thing with the flank here and the neck. I could have made a neck roast, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> kind of butchered it when I, when I split it. So we'll probably just grind that as well. And then I'm gonna do part of the back strap and then I'm gonna do a standing, a standing rib roast, venison style, if we can. This is where it would be nice to know what you're doing. Which I don't. Okay. So there's really not any meat left on that piece there. It's all bone. That would be half of the pelvis and then part of the spine. That's all fat there. Okay, that'll be good to grind. Now there's all kinds of tendons and sinews that run through these back straps. So we're gonna trim it up a little bit. Okay, well that's a pretty clean back strap. Yeah, these Sinewy tendons back here are really tough. People used to make bowstrings out of those. Yeah, it's a lot of rib meat. I don't know what we can do with it, but we'll figure something out. Say right about here. Okay, so we hit the end of the kind of the narrow rib bones right there. 
So we're going to quit there. Back strap. And this is part of the neck. So we'll trim it up and toss it in the grinder. We're going to make a cut right there along the spine. Maybe. It's pretty tricky. There's really no technical reason to do this. It's just one of those things. Looks kind of cool when you get it done. Go ahead and French these rib bones. That is a lot of work. But if you got somebody you want to impress, that's the ticket right there. That's actually the exit wound there. Went all the way through. We're going to go ahead and separate the shank. So that's the front shank. I'm going to cut it in half and we'll use it to make asabuco. It's really hard to cook this piece of meat in any kind of conventional way because it's so full of tendons. So when they make asabuco, they just braise it very slowly for a long, long time. Believe it or not, that's a brand new blade. First time I ever had osobuco was at the Greek Islands restaurant in Chicago. Fantastic place if you're ever there. Traditionally it's made with lamb or goat, but uh, yeah, venison will work. You slow cook this and all these tendons basically just turn into gelatin. Plus you got some marrow in those bones. Makes a nice tasty treat. We got some options here. We could do like a shoulder roast or an arm roast, or we can just debone it and grind it or make some boneless roasts. It's pretty shot up in this area. So if we're gonna do anything, it's gonna have to be on the front section here. We'll just follow this bone up. There should be another joint. So that would be like your arm, and then this is the blade. Well, the rear quarter gets addressed pretty much the same as the front quarter. We're going to chop this rear shank again for making also buco. I had a bandsaw, honestly, but we don't. So we're gonna pull the bone out. Well, we'll go ahead and get rid of this guy here. Nice small roast there. Now, what do we want to do with this big honky tonkin thing? I don't know. You'd say just come in kind of like this. I think this one will just uh, yeah, we'll toss that in the grind. 
That's as far down as I'm going to break it. If I want to make steaks or something, I'll just thaw these out and uh, chop them up when I'm ready. Why are you hobbling around, zombie dog? He spends all night hunting rodents, and he's completely sacked out during the day. Aren't you, pup? Yeah, and guess what? I got another deer, and this one has horns. Pretty nice rack on him. So we're gonna chop this one up. It usually goes quite a bit faster on the second one, since I actually sorta of know what I'm doing. It's gonna be a little different on this one though. We're gonna have to cape it out because I wanna get it I wanna get it mounted. Not that it's anything spectacular, but I believe it's the biggest deer I've gotten. And it's pretty much a dead ringer for the last one I had mounted. They could be twins. The only difference is the the width of the what do they call those brow tines there. This guy is just a little bit wider. I gotta say, it's a little unnerving working with an audience. <laughs> Come on, pup. He sent me a couple of pictures of how, how he wants it cut, so we'll follow his instructions. So we don't need this part. You can cut it along each side, down along the inside of the front leg. But he said it's even better if you can just tube the whole thing out. So we'll try to separate the hide without making any cuts through it. There we go. There we go. And they used to have great big two-handed cleavers. They called them hog splitters. It's just what they were for. Splitting hogs. So all I'm gonna do is just follow the spinal cord down. It's pretty easy. got a lot of meat off that buck. These coolers are full. So they're both about half trimmings and half whole cuts. So I'm pretty happy with that. This is our off fall, two five gallon buckets. It's really not too bad. That doesn't include the head. Time to grind. I've got 33 pounds of meat from that buck. I just put it into gallon plastic bags and then froze it. It's still mostly frozen, which is good. Uh, if one thing I've learned about grinding is the colder, the better. If you try to do it when it's warm, it just, it smears and just makes a big gelatinous mess. Uh, we have to add some fat. That's very important. That's one thing that my, when my mother was helping us do deer when I was younger, she just refused to add fat to the, to the deer meat and it's, it's hard to do anything with it when it's like that. So normally, you just add some beef fat or pork fat. Uh, unfortunately, the places that would sell you beef or pork fat are also in the business of grinding up venison. So they, they just absolutely will not sell it to you this time of the year. So what I should have done is bought some in the summer and then frozen it and then I would have it, but I did not do that. So. 
I was talking to Eric O, Mr. South Main Auto. He said just use bacon. So that's what we're gonna do. I've got nine pounds of cubed bacon here. So I think he said to use about one third bacon to two thirds venison. We're gonna be a little bit short on that. Uh, I figure if the bacon is, let's say 60% fat, uh, we should end up with about, what, six pounds of fat for 30 pounds of meat. That should put us right around 20%. So I think we'll be okay. Yeah, uh, the other problem is that bacon's pretty pricey. Uh, luckily this diced bacon is a little bit cheaper, but there's still probably over $50 of bacon there. So yeah, should have bought some pork fat. Anyway. We're gonna try to mix this stuff up. It might still be too frozen. I don't know, I'm gonna have to wait a little bit. Yeah, that's some good stuff. Hey, out of there, come on. I'd be curious to see what happens with the flavors. I mean, you know, bacon is cured, so it has salt and you know, other spices added, and then sometimes it's smoked or there's smoke flavors added, but I mean, nothing's ever been made worse by adding bacon. So. I think it'll be a winner. So tempting, huh, pup? All right, I think that's gonna work just fine. Got some big chunks, but I've got a feeling that's not gonna be a problem anymore. We've gotten a slight upgrade in the meat grinding department. This little beauty is a Hobart half horsepower industrial meat grinder. It probably came over on the Mayflower. I mean, I'm, I'm serious, it could be 100 years old. This thing is built like a tank. 150 bucks. I could run my old meat grinder through this one and it wouldn't even bat an eye. Yeah, it obviously predates safety. Anyway, let's see what she can do. Uh, I got a 3 8 plate, 10 millimeter. By the way, we're gonna do a two grinds, coarse and a, and a fine. Take us all day to grind, grind venison. got the 3 16 plate, whatever that is, 4 point something millimeter, 4.75. Uh, normally with my old grinder, I would put this coarse ground meat back in the freezer, let it flash freeze for, I don't know, 30 minutes or something. But this thing's so fast, I don't think it's necessary. So I had the big hopper make a lot less mess. Bring in the cleanup crew. How pop? Let 
Max, come on, you are very unhelpful. Out of there. All right. That looks pretty darn good to me. I actually called an audible and I removed one pack of bacon. It just it seemed like it had more than enough fat. This bacon must be almost entirely fat. So we ended up with what seven and a half pounds of that cubed bacon and about 30, I don't know, 32, 33 pounds of venison. Yeah, that worked fantastically. On the small grinder, you know, the little one that I have, the second grind is always pretty brutal, even when you when you refreeze it. But this thing just chewed right through it. Cool, we'll package that up and we're basically done with our deer processing until we make summer sausage and jerky. Some smart guy put a big hole in this heart. Buddy, are you forming a show? <laughs> yeah, get over it. We're trying to. Can I be in it? <laughs> yeah, in a little bit. <laughs> All right now. I need to go potty right now, though. Okay. Just like to get those kind of stringy tendons out of the heart. You're already making excuses? No. I just want everyone to know that I've had a terrible day. I've had a headache all day. <sighs> but I am prepared to try your dinner. They're all playing tiny violins for you. Oh, we really like that song. The kiddo and I listen to it all the time. I'm just saying, you're putting me on the spot here. And I just want our 200 thousand subscribers to understand that no, no. we'll put it on a different channel so no one can find it but there might be a reason why other than your cooking because your cooking is never bad sometimes you put a lot of spice and stuff see this is what my day's been like you're saying those potatoes are adequately cooked <laughs> i'm saying that these potatoes are uh, just following along with the rest of my day. It's definitely leaner than the steaks that we usually eat. Has yes. this been has this been recording the entire time? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm just wanted to make sure. It's definitely not one of my mom's fat cows. Um. So that is heart. Oh. And that is tenderloin. Oh, so this is the heart that I've been eating. It does taste like steak. You're right. Just tastes like a really good steak. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm the focus of this video right now.
Well, my reaction is obviously going to be biased. Because you've already had it once? Because I made it. Mm. So we're trying to get some more honest feedback. I liked how you cooked this better than the squirrel that you cooked to me. Yeah, I think squirrel's a little more of an acquired taste than deer. So I can say that I've had deer heart now? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm trying, okay?